I'm about to demonstrate the SYS-E300-9D Xeon D2100 series CPU based system here, 8 cores, shift with this 84 watt power supply, which may or may not be GA level, so maybe this is an engineering sample, I don't know, but we're at 67, 65 watts or so. This is a virtual machine running on ESXi 6.7, which is loaded up and booted, obviously you can see all of that here. And um, actually, let's look at the host a little bit. So when we look at the host, you're seeing the server. And there it is. It's recognized. You see how many CPUs and all that. Cool. Now, let's go back to monitor. And we're looking at CPU performance now, right, for the host. So there's our CPU over the last uh, hour or so. And we'll have a nice graph. So when I abuse the CPU, I've given three of the four physical cores over to this VM. When we abuse it, we're going to see the watts go up, and we're going to see the uh, see what happens with the uh, system. Okay, this is on, let me turn that to two threads, click OK. So Prime95, an old tool, it's running. We are already up to 101 watts or so. And holding steady, system is on. Now, is this graph Live. Well, a couple things you'll point out. If you're using host client like I am, putting my browser straight to the system, you want to make sure auto refresh is on, and it's doing that every 15 seconds. Just need to little, wait a little bit. Let's leave it at 102 watts, and we're going to see that ramp up. Now, what is the scale here? All right, so hundreds at the top, and we're getting pretty close to it. All right, next, let's go to Prime 95 and start kill it. All right, Prime 95 has been ended. So we're close to maxing out the system resources. Um, uh, let's see, we did two in the last, so we'll do three on this one, and let's see how we do. So now we're hitting 109 watts. 109 watts and holding. The 84 watt power supply here is holding up, amazingly. This system has only one Samsung 950 Evo, one terabyte M.2 NVMe drive in there. And that's it, and a USB drive that ESXi 6.7 is booted from. So there's no big PCI card or some you know power drain here. I do have four 32 gig DIMMs installed in the system. So that's 128 gig total. The system can handle up to 512 gig in theory, although the compatibility guide does not show that. All right, it obviously got very quiet in here. <laughs> um, so yeah, it abruptly shut off. So that's the issue I wanted to show in this video, that there's apparently a, a problem here with the system. And actually that takes out um, IPMI for a little bit too. I think it'll let me log in soon enough. Whatever it's showing here is, you know, 50 degrees. But if we click auto refresh, it's probably going to complain that it's actually lost the connection. We can turn the server back on. So they brought power off. You know, it showed down to about 11, 12 watts over here when IPMI was on standby waiting for me to hit the power switch. Um, and it's asking me to go ahead and log in again. So we didn't lose IPMI for long, but we lost the session. So standing and typing crooked is a challenge. All right. So we're back, uh, and then server health, we can see there's probably little evidence of the CPU getting all that hot. In fact, during power on self-test, which is happening now, you're not going to see the measurements of RPMs or CPU temp or any of that while it's booting. So it's not a heat issue, right? It's, I know this, um, in that I've watched on other runs, the CPU never got past, I think it was like 60 Celsius, even when it, putting a heavy load on it like that. So that's... Just not the issue. And there's the CPU. You can see everything up here. Telling us what's booting, right? That is not the issue. The issue is the physical power supply just can't handle the system. And look at this. We're just booting here with the fan at higher speed. We hit 83 watts. So we're tapped out, just powering on the machine. Never mind actually running a workload or something like a VM on there. Now the fan settles down, so you're getting a sense of what the power draw is during the power um, self-test cycle and now booting. The operating system. So that's it. Uh, I've shown you the problem. You have a sense of uh, the power draw and the system. 
It's pretty close to double the E300 8D of two years ago versus the E300 9D of this year, which is uh, May of 2018. Um, almost doubling, at least a third more at idle. I have to go back and look at some of my old videos. I don't actually have one of those in my possession. So you've gotten a good sense of the system. You're seeing we're at 51 degrees here and you're seeing other temperatures in the RPMs actually uh, live updated, which is a nice touch. So that auto refresh is pretty handy. All right, you know what? It won't take me long to recover this. We just do another run for you here. Now you have to log out. That session's gonna be toast, right? That's normal. No point in hitting enter yet, because you can see the operating system just finished booting. All right, might be pushing my luck to boot to try to log in this quickly. Let's see what happens. We're in, host client, nice and snappy. Here it is. We're back and ready to run this probably a little bit damaged Windows operating system, uh, VM. This is me a little angry. Uh, it wasn't exactly the most graceful shutdown in the world there, as we uh, yanked power. <laughs> Right, in the middle of whatever it was trying to do. So yeah, that might take a little time. Let's make sure auto refresh is on over here again. If it's not already, there we go. Put that at 15 seconds. So now we should get this performance graph uh, live updating as this VM starts to come up for the second run. Over here, we're gonna wanna slide that over so you can actually see what's going on. Let me uh, zoom that browser out just a little. All right, so now you can see CPU temp. No, that's not going to work. All right, so here we go. Sorry, watching me sizing windows. Kind of important though. The whole point is I want to show you the temperatures over there. And I should be sliding this over. There we go. Plenty of room. All right, so CPU temp, 52 degrees. Great. Uh, VM looks like it's done booting. Cool. And... Looks like remote consoles give me a little bit of a sluggishness there. Again, we didn't exactly shut things down the correct way. Not really a shocker. All right, cool. Now, slide this down a little bit and time to run Prime 95, but after I want to double check and show you, do I have three virtual CPUs again? The answer is yes. And now I'm going to run Prime again. And we know it shuts out pretty fast if I put that number at three threads. So I'm going to put it at torture threads of two this time to give us a little more lengthy look at three virtual CPUs being abused. Temperature should be going uh, higher there. Is auto refresh on? Yep. And over here we're seeing 100 watts. So this is a pretty good steady state to leave it in for a little bit. And here we should see the CPU consumed percent ready. Uh, should get closer to 100 soon here. So uh, it doesn't look like that screen has refreshed in a little while. Um, but the temperature, not an issue at all. One of my earlier videos in the series, I actually rerouted the cable that goes to the motherboard from the uh, front here and um, dramatically uh, increased airflow, I believe, inside. This is running quite cool. I think some of my earlier videos show maybe 60 degrees Celsius. So I'll have to go back and review that. Um, so that's about it. We have a system under heavy load. Power supply itself, if I touch it here, it is not very hot. I suspect if I ran it for an hour or something, it would probably get pretty hot. <laughs> and um, at this point, well, I think I'm about done. Uh, I've shown you one I wanted to show you. You get a sense of the degrees. You get a sense of the RPMs. Uh, we're at 6,900 RPMs on the CPU fan. And, uh, sorry, there's three fans. There's no CPU fan. There's three fans across the front. And it looks like uh, one of them is at lower RPMs for whatever reason. Not sure why FPMI is doing that. Um, all these results may change if the, when the product actually ships. So BIOS and IPMI, I might have pre-release versions, right? Don't really know. So let's finish with that. What am I running? So I'm bringing up the system screen. And right here it says firmware version 1.14, BIOS version 1.0. So there's our IPMI and BIOS versions. All right, so hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, thanks for watching. And thanks for visiting. Take your try. IT at home. <laughs>